the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for bringing us all here together tonight, um, especially these 10th graders as they are just about a month away from making their confirmation. Please open our ears and our hearts to your word as we discuss prayer tonight, um, as that's our communication with you. We ask Mary, our Blessed Mother, for her intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, if I were to ask you what prayer is, what would you give? What would you say? What would you say prayer is? Emma? A way to talk to God. A way to talk to God. Who would add on to that? Um, maybe before we start to really know what prayer is, it could seem like we're making a wish. Prayer is simply just talking to God. Raise your hand if you play a sport. Very good. Raise your hand if you play an instrument. Raise your hand if you have a hobby that you really enjoy. <laughs> Great. So all of those things take what? In order to become good at them, what do we need to do? Count them. We have to practice. Very good. So tonight, we are talking about prayer, which again, it's that communication with God. And all of you are here now building your relationships with God as you prepare for the sacrament of confirmation, which is that really, that affirming like, yes, I am confirmed. I want to live out my Catholic faith. I want this to be a part of my life. And prayer is a central point in that. The past few months, we've been having people come in and talk. So in January, we had um, a couple come in and talk about the vocation of marriage. Andy and Melanie, do you guys remember them? Yep. And then last month, we had Brian come in, and he talked about the vocation of the priesthood. Um, so in both cases, and in all of our cases too, we're called to be in this relationship with God. And just like any relationship that we have, we have to talk. We're not going to grow in a relationship with a friend if we don't talk. We're not going to grow in a relationship with our parents if we don't talk. Talking is so important. Communication is so important. That's why prayer is like everything in terms of coming to have that greater relationship with God, the one that he wants us to have. So again, it's that practice, like Caroline said, we have to practice in order to become good at it. Right now, some of us might not have a prayer life. Maybe we pray here and there. Maybe we go to Sunday some Sundays and others not so much. But ultimately it comes back to starting somewhere. We have to start somewhere. Um, and learning about how to pray is what we're going to do tonight. So Courtney is going to share a bit on this prayer process that she learned about. Um, so please give her your full attention. Uh, but before that, I forgot we're going to watch the video. So, eyes up on the screen. This is the prayer process. Things to do are those that 
that have never been done before. The first time man went to the moon was incredibly difficult because everything had to be learned from scratch. Fortunately, prayer isn't like that. Great men and women have been practicing prayer for thousands of years and we can learn a tremendous amount from them. The sad thing is, most people either don't pray at all or don't pray very much. And the reason? Because nobody has ever really taught them how to pray. In this session, I'm going to teach you how to pray. I'm going to teach you the prayer process. I developed the prayer process a few years ago after studying hundreds of methods of prayer because I wanted to give people a simple process that they could use every day to guide their conversation with God. After all, that's what prayer is ultimately. It's a conversation with God. The prayer process is designed to be very simple, yet deeply personal. And it's made up of seven simple steps. Let's take a look at them. Step one, gratitude. In step one, we simply begin by thanking God in a personal dialogue for whatever we're grateful for today. Step two, awareness. In the second step, we think about those times in the past 24 hours when we were or were not the best version of ourselves. And we talk to God about these situations. We talk to Him about why did they happen? How did they happen? And what did we learn from these situations when we were the best version of ourselves? And what did we learn from the situations when we weren't the best version of ourselves? Step three, significant moments. Here we try to identify something we experienced in the past 24 hours and explore what's God trying to say to us through that event or through that person. God's always talking to us. The question is, are we listening? And very often God speaks to us through the people we encounter in the day or situations and circumstances we encounter in the day. Step four, the fourth step, peace. Here, we ask God to forgive us for any wrong we've committed against ourselves, against another person, or against Him. We also ask God to fill us with a deep, deep peace. Step five, freedom. In the fifth step, we speak to God about how He is inviting us to change our lives so that we can experience the freedom of really being the best version of ourselves. We talk to God about, okay, God, how are you challenging me, inviting me, calling me to change my life at the moment so I can be the best version of myself? Step six, others. Here in step six, we lift up to God anyone we feel called to pray for today. We ask God to bless them and to guide them. And finally, step seven, we pray the ancient prayer, the Our Father. It's an ancient prayer, most of us have been praying it since our childhood, but to learn to pray it slowly and deliberately, and to think about the words and to, to learn new insights into this ancient prayer every day of our lives. That's the prayer process. The prayer process is simple, and like most things, it's easy to talk about. But the best way to understand it is to practice it. So let's give it a try. Thanks for joining us today. Happy early almost St. Patrick's Day. Um, so today I'm just going to share a little bit about my journey and a little bit about the prayer process. I know that was a lot of steps, so I'm going to break it down for you a little bit more and how it's worked for me. Um, but just taking a step back, some of you might, I'm Courtney, nice to see you all. Some of that you we have been in groups with together, some of you might not. Um, you may have heard a little bit about my story. I'm almost 38 years old, but in Catholic years, I'm one of the younger ones here. I was confirmed to receive First Communion in, in 2014, so I was a little later in life, um, and I feel like I'm still learning, and I think that's the case for a lot of us. Even if you, you were born in the Catholic Church, you're constantly learning and growing in your faith. So I'm just going to share a little bit about how... Um, how I've grown is specifically related to the prayer process. Um, I grew up in a Christian church, and we had Sunday school. We called it Sunday school. 
And I remember, I'm sure I learned in Our, our Father. So we had that, I, I got that down. Um, but I can't remember being taught how to pray. And I think that's the point. There's a few videos about the prayer process that this person does. And his point is, even no matter, he actually does some of these uh, talks to uh, congregations, to adults. So this isn't just for younger kids, teens. This is for anybody. This could go to anybody that, hey, maybe there's a check-in and we say, we're telling everybody, pray, pray, pray. Did anybody ever stop and say, hey, here's some ideas about how to pray? So I knew, I knew prayer was a good thing. I knew that that was probably something I should be doing. Um, they told us at Sunday school, there was a little prayer they taught us. It was called, God is good, God is great, and we thank him for our food. And I remember our family used to say that um, right before we ate at dinner time. So that was kind of my exposure. Okay, it's getting me somewhere, all right? God, you're great. You know, be gratitude for your food, okay? There are people that don't have food. So I'm starting to learn how to pray. Um, you know, through childhood, you go through things, as I'm sure some of you have. You start to see people go through difficulties and you have some successes. So I knew, I saw maybe your grandmother died or an aunt go through cancer. I knew in my head, I'm gonna pray to God because I know a lot of that is outside my control. So I'm gonna pray to God for my gr grandmother. I'm gonna pray to God for my aunt, for her strength. So I'm starting to think about others, that's good. But I'm also starting to pray for myself. Uh, God, help me pass this test tomorrow. Or God, help me get my license tomorrow. Um, so I'm still the center of, of all my wishes, although I'm starting to think about other people in my prayer life to God. In college, I did have some, some friends that would, every now and then, invite me to come to Catholic Church with them. So I'm starting to get exposed to the Catholic Church. But if I looked around, I was definitely that person that was clinging to that prayer card or that mass kind of step by step. And I don't know, does anybody remember that? It used to be pre-COVID. They had a, a card that was like a cardboard laminate. And it used to say what the diff different prayers were during mass, how to say it. And I knew none of it. I was looking around. I thought I was, I must be the only one looking at this card. Everybody's going to point to me and say, you're a non-Catholic. <laughs> but they didn't. And I took it step by step. I didn't know the Hail Mary, never heard of that prayer, never heard of what a rosary it was. And I took it step by step. Maybe when they were saying the Hail Mary, all I got was Hail Mary, full of grace. And that's the best I did. But I started somewhere. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. If that's the best I could do, at least I tried to learn one more. If, if you have to look at that wall, there's no shame in that. You have to start somewhere and just try to keep building and hey try to remember a little bit more each time so that's where i was I, I started to continue to grow maybe get a little bit off of staring directly at the prayer card and holding it throughout the whole mass and maybe once i got down the prayers i could start focusing a little bit more on my relationship with god um so i checked in again where's my prayer in this once i was confirmed and receiving the communion I got into the habit of praying for everybody I could think of after I received communion. So I have a big family. I have about 30 cousins, lots of aunts and uncles, friends, you know, co-workers. I would use that time when I felt closest to Christ to pray for absolutely everybody I could name, I could think of, even people I didn't know. I would pray for people that lost their job or pray for the homeless or pray for people that couldn't afford their food. So start to think about others, that's a good thing, right? That's getting us kind of out of like me being the center of everything, um, to think about others. And, but still focusing on, God, can I please get that job I want? Can I please get that promotion I want? Can I please get that relationship I want? Um, so I'm still, still a major part, and, and you know, granted it's our relationship with God, but in my formation, it tended to be the same things that I was often repeating. It, I didn't feel like I was really growing. I felt like, yeah, I was thinking of others, but my, my requests weren't really changing from day to day, week to week. I didn't feel like I was really growing through prayer with God. So I took a step back and, and kept, kept kind of listening and hearing and hearing what other people were doing. Um, you know, getting involved in different church groups. 
And um, actually, there was one group I was in, someone, maybe it was Elizabeth or someone else in the group, had mentioned something called the Gratitude Novena. Can everybody repeat after me? Gratitude? Gratitude. Novena. Novena. Okay. If you remember that, maybe you won't, but that's something you can Google. It's a nine-day little guided uh, quick prayer that you can do at the beginning of the day, end of the day. And I'll tell you how it relates to the prayer process, but it was something that started me off and saying, okay, here's something I can do. Focus on gratitude, not just about what I want, but what am I thankful for? Not just about all the bad things that are happening to all the people I know, but what can I focus on that are good? You know, what can I be grateful for? So that was like, huh, that's a little bit different. That's a way to grow in my relationship with God. And then I was exposed to this prayer process around the same time. And you saw that that first um, step, and there were seven, I know it was a lot to take in, um, and we're going to break it down for you after we have handouts and all that good stuff. But what I used to do is I, I had a, a kind of an image download of this handout we're going to give you. I used to pull it out, out on my phone in the morning and go through it. It really took no more than 10 minutes. So I know that was a five minute video. It might seem like, geez, that's a lot of steps. But um, it, it doesn't have to be long and, and it could be whatever you make of it. So maybe someday you really dig into like three of those. Uh, it doesn't have to be all seven take like hours and hours and hours. But if you do it every day or every other day or at least start it every, every week, you know, start somewhere. Start with just those three words if you can. Uh, like the Hail Mary or certain just one of the steps it will it will help you grow in your relationship with God and also not put like you at the first of everything but try to grow in your relationship so it's a two-way not just two-way but that you're not always God just asking for something give me this give me this give me this oh yeah do that for that person you know because no one in our life wants that type of relationship <laughs> so I didn't want that relationship with God either I wanted to thank God for what he's doing in my life and, and try to grow in my prayer. So I'll touch on a few things, and again, we'll break out and kind of get into some discussions. Um, but what, again, continue to learn how to talk to God. So gratitude, we talked about gratitude, what that means. Awareness, what uh, Matthew Kelly in the video talked about was acknowledging times in your day that you weren't the best version of yourself. And we talked a lot about this, about the good, better, best, you know, decision making. But if you look back in your day, or look back, if you're doing it in the morning, you can look at the day before. It doesn't have to be like the biggest of thing. Oh, I, I was an absolute terrible person. You know, I, I did this terrible, terrible thing. It can be little things too that you look back and, eh, I wish I got a redo on that one. Maybe you snapped at your friend or your coworker or your boss or your uh, parent. And he said, hey, if I'm really honest with self, that's probably not the best version of myself. And you just acknowledge it to that God. And, and it doesn't have to be real formal, like, oh God, thou art so wise. Please advise me of this. No, it, you want to have it be like talking to a friend. You can say, God, I, I know you saw that time when I wasn't, when I cut that guy off in line and I gave him the finger. Um, probably not the best I can do. Help me to do better tomorrow. Um, so just, just that's the idea about awareness is, you know, try to, try to acknowledge that to God. God sees it. God knows it. We think about it when we're doing the examination of conscience, when we go to, to confession. A lot of you talk, uh, had the opportunity to do the sacrament of confession not too long ago. And that's great. That's awesome. Like, do that as much as you can. But if we're only doing that once a year, or maybe just for uh, New Year's, when we're doing New Year's resolutions, that's not growing. That's kind of just like, oh, that's, that's good. But how are we changing? And if we check in with ourselves a little bit more frequent, not just like once a year, maybe we could start making some change in our life and God can, can work with us on that. Um, so, you know, just, just try to check in. Hey. We're not perfect people, we're sinners. But acknowledge that to God and, and help him grow, ask him to help you grow in that. Ask for forgiveness, you know, um, or even ask him, hey, help me to do better tomorrow. Um, help me to do better if you weren't patient with this one person. Help me to grow in patience with this one person tomorrow, next week. Um, you know, try to get a little specific on it. Um, a couple more I'll talk about, uh, freedom, 
how is God inviting me to change your life? It can even be, God, show me, show me the way. Show me how you'd like me to change your life. You don't have to have all your answers in your prayer. You can ask God to show you or, or leave it open-ended for God. Uh, and then praying for others, we talked about that. So that's something I had down. I was good with that. Maybe some of you haven't really incorporated that in your life. But it's always good to obviously think about others um, besides yourself. And praying the Our Father at the end. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more as well. But when you pray the Our Father, for me, again, it's something I learned very early on. Think about the words you're saying. Sometimes we say it kind of robotically because we say it so much. Yeah, yeah, we're saying the Our Father. But sometimes you want to just pick up on a few lines that you're actually saying. Some of it is, you know, you're saying, Thy will be done. You're saying, God, I give my path to you to help me find my way. Uh, another part you say in our Father is, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We talked a lot about this, but, you know, are we treating our, our neighbor as ourselves? Are we treating others how we want to be treated? We're praying that every time in the Our Father. Are we, you know, we're asking God for that. Are we really, you know, enacting that throughout our day? Again, no one's perfect, but think about that sometimes. Pick up on one or two things when you're praying the Our Father. Again, sometimes we get into, you know, after we, we get out of the do I even know the words thing, after we kind of settle down, what are we even saying? What are the words we're saying? Take some time to think about that a little bit uh, here and there. And uh, lastly, I'll just say that um, there's a couple other prayers that have helped me when I don't know what to say, when I'm going through a good time or a bad time, is to say to, to God or to pray the Jesus, I trust in you prayer. And just say, Jesus, I trust in you. And let it not be about me. Let that be about Jesus. Let it be about God. Um, also praying, God, I'm worried about this, whatever it might be. I give my worry to you because I know that only you will get me through. And I say that because sometimes there's so many things in life that you don't have control over. You might worry about this or that. And praying that to me puts, puts it in God's hands. And I'm able to just say, okay, I give, I give my worry to God and he'll, he'll lead me wherever it's going to go. So those are some prayers in addition to the prayer process that have helped me. Um, we're going to take some time to break it down again. I'm happy to talk with you after as well. But um, yeah, I hope that gives you some ideas of where you can grow in your relationship with prayer. And uh, thanks for listening. So.